Okay. Uh, good morning and welcome, everyone. We will pray and uh, uh, continue with chapter eight in our notes today. So, uh, anybody who has the mic, please do lead us in prayer. Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for this um, time that we have, Lord. And Lord, as we um, um, study about um, the strategies of the enemy and how um, he tries to overpower us, how he tries to overrule us, Lord, I pray that um, you would learn, um, we would learn to overcome him. And that um, thank you, Jesus, for building in us that strength, that authority, and that uh, you'll help us, Lord. Um, Thank you, Jesus, for opening our hearts and minds uh, to understanding, to understand what is being taught to us in this class. And uh, thank you, Lord, for everything. In the name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, uh, Rin. So today we will look at uh, the strategies of a defeated enemy so far. We've seen the nature of uh, Satan, his demons, how Jesus has won the victory on the cross, the methods that Satan uses. But today we will look at the methods of Satan. Uh, and at the same time, at least four main areas where he is actually able to affect uh, any person, particularly a believer. So um, what are these areas? Now, you already asked the question last time that if Jesus has defeated Satan. Why are we still experiencing so many um, so-called attacks from the devil and you know, things are challenging okay, on the earth? So I shared that when somebody is defeated and their uh, uh, time is limited, they will do everything in their power to gain control. So the same thing Satan tries to do. He's defeated. He already knows it. He knows his time here on earth is limited. So uh, to, to gain support, to create trouble from the outside, through influence. So these are all uh, the kind of things that people do under what is known as uh, guerrilla warfare. Okay, So that is what Satan is trying to do right now, knowing that he is defeated. Now, if he can get a loophole, a foothold, if he can enter through a crack, if he can uh, influence the mind of the believer to weaken the will of a believer, it becomes easy for him to create trouble in the believer's life. So uh, primarily, what are these areas uh, or primarily, what are these means through which he can actually affect the believer? So it's been enlisted for us in our notes. I'll uh, number it out for us. So it's numbered as three, but then, you know, uh, there are there are four things we'll talk about. One is mind games. Okay. So he loves this area, the mind. If he can influence us in our minds, if we lose the battle in the mind, then he has won. So no wonder you have uh, books that are titled the battlefield of the mind, the conquest of the mind, because for a believer, the challenge is mainly in the area of our mind. So he loves to play mind games. So the second thing is, we've been saying that we must be submitted to God and that no door should be open. So open doors is his other method. Is he defeated? He is already defeated. Okay. But he wants a way in which he can still win. So mind games will allow him to win. Open doors will allow him to win. The third one is intrusion okay violation and intrusion see legally there are uh, sp spiritually speaking legally based on covenant based on what jesus has done the way he has redeemed us satan has no rights over our lives okay so uh, we know even in uh, luke 10 19 we saw that you will trample on serpents and scorpions and nothing by any means shall harm you but at the same time what Satan does is he tries to in, intrude. He tries to violate the set rules, the set covenant, the set 
you know boundaries and he tries to create trouble so his methods we have seen already we saw how he uses temptation intimidation um accusation many of those methods he uses but these are the you you can sort of sum up all of those things under this list as well so first is mind games so what is the meaning of mind games what kind of mind games does satan play satan's tactics we saw that scripture in second corinthians 2 and verse 11 where uh, the bible says lest satan should take advantage of us for we are not ignorant of his devices devices or wiles or plots schemes of the devil they exist now it is dangerous for a believer to give the devil a lot of importance and i've been telling that the main thing is what jesus and the victory of jesus on the cross so we have to give importance to that now if a believer let's take it to the other extreme okay one is giving importance to the devil what is the other extreme ignorant and that's what this verse says don't be ignorant of his devices ignorant is denying the existence or denying the influence of the devil there are a set of believers uh, who might you know who who feel that yeah satan is there so what they don't understand the influence that satan can have that is also dangerous ignorance okay ignorance means i don't know when i see if there is a very high uh, you know high powered uh, electric wire and i don't know about it what will happen if i touch it or i'm exposed to it you know any creature will get burnt okay so ignorance is equally dangerous making the devil a priority is dangerous but opposite not knowing anything about the devil and his influence is also dangerous so the bible says we should be aware so if you're a smart person and uh, you know you're engaging in warfare you want to be victorious in your life you got to know hey i have an enemy this is how he works so i have to be careful in these areas so knowing the enemy and what he actually does as far as in the mind is concerned uh, is very critical so what does he do uh, he will try to use blindness what is blindness spiritual blindness okay spiritual blindness uh, in second corinthians 4:4 4, 4, uh, we see this so satan has blinded the eyes so the spiritual eyes of people are not able to see jesus or understand the salvation of jesus you know sometimes we share about jesus with people they can't understand we are so thrilled and you know passionate and we are telling them you know jesus loves you they're not able to understand anything so what has happened as far as the bible is concerned satan blinds the spiritual eyes of people so that they cannot understand so that is his tactic so when we pray let's say for uh, unbelievers people in our families or over regions this is one prayer we have to pray we have to pray and ask god god remove the blindness from their eyes the spiritual blindness okay so when the blindness is removed then they will be able to see the value of who jesus is and what he has done so blindness is is uh, something that satan uses and he uses all the other techniques you know we spoke about them right we said that uh, in the mind uh, he comes in with accusation temptation wrong thoughts and then that progress happens what is that progress you have the thought then you have the imagination you remember that we discussed it right imagination argument stronghold okay so once there is a stronghold that stronghold can be the place where demons can live okay and then the believer goes into demonization so progress is happening and satan knows if i if i take in this route i will be able to uh, win in a believer's life 
So this way, he is working in the mind. And then uh, deception and uh, craftiness. So you know, different things that he does in the mind where he, he gives us the wrong patterns of thinking. And there is one preacher, he said this. Okay, he said this uh, statement. He said, I cannot afford to have one thought in my mind which is not in the mind of Jesus. Okay, so that's the way we should live our life. I should not think any thought which cannot be in the mind of Jesus. Because if it cannot be, you know, if I, if I have a thought and that thought is impure, I'll be ashamed to think of the fact that can this thought go to Jesus' mind? Can this imagination go to Jesus' mind? So if it cannot be in his mind, it should not be in my mind. You know? So he made that statement. That makes sense. So this is the primary area where I have to overcome. If I overcome in my mind, then I can conquer over the devil. So today I'm just trying to tell us that be aware, be alert. This is where he will try to attack. So how do I protect myself? You know, we have to protect ourselves with the armor of God. The Bible talks about it. If we don't protect with the armor of God, what will happen? You know, uh, the armor, in the armor, you have the helmet of salvation. Or that is nothing but the knowledge of salvation. Who I am in Christ Jesus. If I don't have that, what will he do? There's no helmet, right? Uh, is it safe to not have a helmet when you're doing something important like driving or going for war? It's so crucial. If the head is gone, everything is gone. <laughs> I better take care of my head. I need a helmet. So, in the armor it says, helmet of salvation. Simply means, you should know what salvation is. What has salvation done to you? Who are you in Christ? If I don't know, Satan will accuse. He'll say, who are you? You are not worthy. You are sinful. He'll lie lots of things he will put into our mind. Then what happens? The believer goes down and down. Yeah, I'm worthless. I'm still sinful. You know, burdened by lies. But if I have helmet of salvation, then I'll say, who are you lying to? Devil, stop. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I am justified. I am holy. I am sanctified. So I'm able to put up a fight against the devil if I have my helmet. Okay. So I need to keep that helmet in place. Otherwise, he will blind my mind. He, he uses the blinding tactic. So he will blind my mind. And as a believer, it's very sad if I am blind to what has been done, you know, through the cross. Then breastplate of righteousness. It simply means um, walking in righteousness when I'm doing the right thing. If I don't have that, if I'm not walking in righteousness, if I don't understand that Jesus has made me righteous, then what happens the opposite of that is, you know, he will convince me that I'm still sin and God doesn't accept me. Or he will... Uh, push me into an unrighteous lifestyle. Living in sin is also against the breastplate of righteousness. So these are all his tactics. Basically, he does not want the armor. And he will try to get rid of every part of the armor. Belt of truth. He knows that a believer who is walking in the truth is very powerful. So what will he try to do? Make the believer walk in lies, deception, untruth. Right? Twisting and turning the word of God in the mind of a believer, then it becomes so dangerous. Right? Uh, uh, he's no longer, believer is no longer safe when he's not walking in truth. Then shoes of peace. Shoes of peace, what is the opposite of that? Quarrel, strife, um, disunity. So, a believer who's walking like that also, he's an easy target. For the devil. There's no protection. And so Satan can enter. Shield of faith. What is the opposite of faith? Basically, doubt, fear, worry, anxiety. So a believer who's in this position, always fear, always worry, it's dangerous because it's a tactic of the devil. 
he knows okay let's get rid of the shield of faith no more protection then i can do something in this person's life so we must be careful that you know we do not give the enemy any opportunity so everything we learned about the armor i should make sure i understand about jesus about salvation who i am in christ i should make sure i'm walking in righteousness you know i must uh, uh, make sure that uh, i know the truth of god's word to walk in peace with everyone walk in peace with god and also have faith in god so when as a believer i i go in this way he can't do much in the area of my mind and that is why paul said you know in ephesians uh, chapter 4 and verse 27 he said don't give the enemy a foothold so when i'm walking in this way you can imagine my life is like um a a, a city with a fortress it's protected so satan wants to play all these games he just cannot enter you got it that's the way a, a believer with a renewed mind should be so strong yeah satan is doing this let him do whatever he wants i am already like a fortress right satan cannot enter so paul is saying don't give the devil a foothold don't give any crack in your life then he cannot come in so that's the first thing we should recognize the moment he puts some wrong thoughts in our minds immediately you should pick it up hey wait this is not from god so what are the thoughts in our minds uh, when you read that conquest of the mind, have you finished that book? Some other subject it is there, conquest of the mind. Okay, anyway, um, from where do we get our thoughts? The source or from where thoughts come in our mind? What we hear, okay. Huh? What we see, okay. From Satan, okay. Pictures, yeah. Hmm? Yeah, what we learn, okay. Fine. So, see, there are three primary sources, okay. One is God. So, God can use our mind also. Just the way Satan puts thoughts, just now you said pictures, thoughts. God can put a thought in our hearts. So, I want my mind to be an instrument. Like God can put his thoughts. So God can put thoughts. Second, Satan. Because we are seeing he does all the mind games, the tactics. Second is Satan. Okay. Third is, we would say us, me. Now that thought can be my own thought, original, my own thought, or it can be as, uh, you know, Sean was saying, we learn from outside or um, you know, uh, uh, Vimal was saying, we hear, we hear from people. So what happens is, the third one is me. They are my thoughts because I've picked it up from somewhere or they are my own thoughts. There are three sources, God, Satan, and myself. Okay, so everything that I think, I should develop this ability to regulate. If there's a thought from God, keep it. If there is a thought from the devil, remove it. Okay, or fight it or remove it. If there is a thought from me, check it. Is it in line with the word or not? Then that's why we saw how, you know, Paul wrote, uh, taking every thought captive that uh, exalts itself against the knowledge of God. So it's very important because if we are not careful about our thoughts what happens our thoughts will become um you know what we believe and when we believe certain things that will become our behavior and our behavior will become our lifestyle right and our lifestyle leads to many consequences but where did it all start one thought just one thought right so what God is teaching in his word is, if we are careful about every thought, then you don't have to worry about what Satan is going to do. 
Uh, yes, yes, Sean, can you please use the mic? It's here. Uh, Ma'am, I want to ask, uh, how do you differentiate, they differentiate the thoughts? Like, as in, sometimes the thought will be such that you won't know if it's whether it's from uh, God or whether it's from Satan. Like, suppose you're given a message and suddenly get a thought, uh, thought that, like, you, you feel good after giving a message and you have the thought that don't be overconfident. Now, either, either that thought is from uh, uh, God because you're feeling too good about giving the message or maybe that uh, thought can be Satan also putting you, putting you down. Like said, don't be overconfident. Don't take joy in this uh, type of thing like that. Yeah. You know, you're not worthy of such a thing like that. Yeah. So, um, so we see in one John, chapter five and verse seven, it says that uh, one portion of it says that the spirit and the word agree. The spirit and the word agree. And obviously, we know that the word is in agreement with the Father because word is who Jesus. Jesus was very much in line with the Father. So here is the point. See, the word of God will help us to identify which thought is mine or God's or Satan's. Second, Holy Spirit will help us to identify. Uh, you know, sometimes when I hear something itself, I feel something is wrong. You know, because what is happening? Holy Spirit is working in me. He's giving an impression in my heart. He's giving a witness in my heart saying, don't listen. It's not correct. Okay. So two things will help us protect us from error. That is word. Second is Holy Spirit. Okay. So what I must do is I must practice. So that is why every day studying the word, you know, little by little, you're building little by little every day, even if you spend whatever 30 minutes, 40 minutes, you're meditating in the word. What's happening? It's going into your system. It's cleansing your mind, right? It's changing your standards. So then when you have the word, the deposit of the word in you, when somebody says something, immediately you can tell, hey, this is not correct or this is very correct. Because word is the first thing that will help you. Second is Holy Spirit. Same way. you The more you spend time with God and you know the, the work of the Spirit and all that, the witness of this Holy Spirit also you can tell. But for that, now there is one more uh, scripture, Hebrews 5.14. It says, those who uh, by manner of um, um, use have exercised their senses. So that simply means the more you practice, the better you get. So as a believer is maturing, they become faster at identifying what is right, what is wrong. So that's how it works, uh, Sean. Correct. Yeah. So just start where you are. That's as simple as that. Don't worry too much. Of course, God helps. And if you're still not able to uh, gauge, then you can always go to somebody who's godly and ask for their opinion. What do you think? I'm thinking like this. Should I do this or not? So you can get some godly counsel. Yeah. Okay, good. So this is the manner in which we will... Uh, any Anything? Ma'am, uh, thoughts which are coming from Satan. Ah. So, what is the correct way to like they don't come in our mind? Ah. How we can close doors for that? So, answer. You know what? You can't stop it. That's the answer. See, because it's like uh, how do I say? It's like an open ground. The mind. I can't stop. Satan, anytime he can intercept my thinking, he can just put a wrong thought anytime, any moment. Same thing, God also any moment. Even my own spirit any moment. That I cannot help it. See, I, might, I would have come out of 40 days of fasting, okay. Then I'm going out. I see one brother immediately get angry. I'm like, oh, I just fasted for 40 days. How is this happening to me? But... That's how it works. Satan can put it in your mind anytime. You have to still know how to deal with it. That's the thing. So you can't stop. Answer is you can't stop it. But one thing you can do is, as I said, become strong in the word. Become strong in the spirit. Then only thing you can do sort of is regulate. You know, like a security guard. No, okay, you come inside. You don't come inside. 
where is your ID card? <laughs> Something like that. So you can only regulate the thoughts. So when, uh, if you know that's a wrong thought coming into your mind, you can rebuke that thought. No? Yeah, you can. That's how we can overcome uh, this yeah, yeah. thought. First. You can rebuke it. You can replace it with what God's uh -huh. word says. Jesus did that, no? Mm. He said, it is written. Mm. It is written. So that if thoughts will come, we need to uh, learn to rebuke and Exactly. Exactly. You rebuke it. Sure. That's okay. मैम मुझे लगता है कि जो भी मतलब मेन जड़ है पाप की वो थॉट सी है मींस व्हाट एवर हैपनिंग इन वर्ल्ड लाइक व्हाट एवर सिन आर हैपनिंग इट्स कमिंग ओनली बाय थॉट्स या सो मेन थिंग इज थॉट्स सो वी नीड टू मेन वी नीड मेन थिंग फॉर टू फाइट अगेंस्ट द थॉट्स इफ वी ओवरकम द थॉट्स सो वी कैन ओवरकम ऑल सिंस दैट्स ट्रू yeah very true and uh, uh pastor always says you know like the mind imagination it's a priceless gift which god has given see i can be sitting here but i can be holidaying you know in some other <laughs> beach town maybe i can, because my mind can paint pictures it can give me the sense of you know being somewhere else or i can be feeling like i'm skydiving right now <laughs> right so uh it can take you anywhere so imagine if we have a godly mind where we allow god okay god you paint the pictures in my mind you know you paint uh, good pictures of the vision that god has for our life you know walking in righteousness being a blessing to many people it's so powerful satan knows that so that is why what you said is correct even the evil it start from the mind remember how satan said i will i will exalt myself you know i will uh, become equal to god so it started with his mind and if we overcome it and we fuse you think of the opposite if we use it in the right way if every thought is submitted to god how powerful that will be okay. so uh, yeah so mind is very very crucial in fighting the devil hmm. so i think you've understood mind games isn't it Mm, tell me. You told an example of a fortress around us, uh, mm. and uh, should not allow should not allow any cracks or anything. Correct. But what, like uh, when we uh, see in our mind, sometimes uh, even by our own or by enemy, will uh, certain will give those thoughts. It's like a crack. Then how we can deal with? yeah so uh see i'm just saying that we are protected okay we are live a life in such a way that we are protected from his influence but um you know the way our mind is made this is how it works that thoughts can come in but what i'm saying is whether the thought influences you or not you are protected from that you got it so i need not allow uh, the influence of satan did you understand yeah exactly something like that yeah don't open the door okay yeah. so that yeah what no you can shut the door you have the authority <laughs> Okay, so Anand said, if the doors are open, we can't do anything. And I said, no, you can shut the door. So yeah, that that's the whole point of what we are learning. Use your authority, no? Huh. <laughs> so the world is open. So you're saying the influence is very real. Uh, Mike, please.
मैम आई एम टेलिंग द वर्ड इज फुल ऑफ ऑल थिंग्स लाइक अगर हम बाहर जाए तो हमें कुछ ना कुछ ऐसा दिख ही जाता है जो शायद प्रभु की ओर से नहीं है इट्स नॉट अकॉर्डिंग टू द बाइबल एवरीथिंग इज विद दैट ऑल थिंग्स सो लाइक आनंद बर्दर इज सेइंग द डोर्स आर ओपन वी कांट क्लोज सो दैट वे दैट वे आई एम टेलिंग इट्स लाइक रियल ऑल थिंग्स आर इन द वर्ल्ड वी कांट क्लोज यस दोस थिंग्स दैट्स ट्रू विमल बट सी वी आल्सो हैव द पावर ऑफ चॉइस इजंट इट नाउ i can definitely avoid to the best degree possible like if i know that you know if if i uh, you know access some website or something that oh it's it's just messing up my imagination don't access it or don't go to a place that bothers you don't do that so i we have to put those restrictions on ourselves because see the best person who knows me is me i know what influences me what doesn't influence me so based on that i can have some standards for myself i'll say no i won't um, go to this place i won't do this uh, you know i won't uh, look at my phone after 10 p something like that make your own rules to protect yourself yeah you can avoid to to the best uh, degree possible yes Yeah, so another example is like many times I'm sure uh, you have also seen that as you go on the road, we'll have some uh, Hindu festival having some uh, their idols and all in the cart, and they'll be taking passes, especially mm-hmm. in driving. So at that point, we can't simply turn our car and go some other way yeah. without obstructing it. You have to go straight on our path. Only thing you can do is ignore that and just focus on our route. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So have focus. Things will come your way, but they need not uh, influence you. Okay. Yes. Sometimes I'm like uh, thoughts come came mm-hmm. right in our minds. Uh, like we try to avoid so much, even like everything we used to do. But even though like it's came again and again, in that time like what do we have to do? Like correct. So uh, see, uh, Satan that way is quite stubborn. So when he assesses each individual, he knows our weak weaknesses. Let's say somebody's weakness is money. He knows. So then. again and again again and again he'll try he'll try to bring the building down okay but you should not give up you have to fight it okay so that is one thing now the second issue is remember we said thoughts um imagination arguments strongholds so sometimes when the stronghold is already built then it is very difficult to stop the devil so in that situation what one has to do is first you have to break the stronghold then only you can stop the thoughts yeah so for that we'll we'll come to that uh, chira through prayer we may have to cast out demons you know we may have to do all those things and maybe people also have um, emotional scars they have emotional wounds okay so we have to rehabilitate them in that sense we have to talk to them help them develop the right identity then what happens that constant thing right um they will become powerful over the devil otherwise they will fight the thoughts but the thoughts will not go away because stronghold is still there you know when you uproot even a tree if you cut from the top what happens it will grow again okay but the right way of getting rid of the work of the devil is from the root you have to remove and burn it or destroy it that's how it should be done you got the answer okay fine okay so that is about uh, mind games and we've understood now okay uh nina has a comment here let me quickly go over it mm, says uh, as so usually when we try to justify ourselves it sometimes leads to an argument or misunderstanding with others especially when it comes to our own family or oh sorry that's from uh, jackin uh, not nina uh, and uh, you're saying it leads to a misunderstanding with others especially when it comes to our own family or um, our christian sisters and brothers who also know the truth how do we how do we deal victorious during such times 
is it okay to remain silent and they keep misunderstanding about us should we pray and try to explain ourselves again uh, when we do not want to lose our peace at any cost okay it's a difficult uh, situation uh, jackin when you know uh, there are misunderstandings with people even christian people i think what the bible suggests is that wherever possible we can go and work it out with that brother or sister okay so that means that we can seek an opportunity to talk to them for clarifications but you need a lot of wisdom sometimes it works out fine sometimes it makes it worse when you go and talk things out so you really need wisdom so there is that opportunity to talk it through with a brother and sister and establish peace between both of you but if that is not possible then jackin you have to keep it in prayer and you have to ask the lord to um you know uh, give peace to you now three things can happen either god will create an opportunity for you to resolve this matter with that person that is amazing second is it may not uh, be resolved okay but that person might have good feelings for you and so you still have a cordial relationship even though you don't talk to them that's also wonderful but the third thing might happen where the issue doesn't get resolved and they still think you're wrong and you just have to learn to live with that in a gracious way and say that okay you know i can't prove myself to everybody uh, but yeah let me be humble if i'm not at all in a place where i can explain it's it's fine god knows god is the lifter up of my head god is my deliverer i i've come clean before the lord but you know people are still holding me responsible i can't do anything about it right so uh, yeah jackin is that okay okay praise god all right thank you so much um so open doors open doors and situation open doors and violations intrusions in your class i only start a lesson i never really finish it um there's only 5 minutes ha huh? some more questions okay mm. Mm. Correct. Yeah. 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 So that's uh, as you yourself uh, gave the answer in the question, uh, Anand. Uh, we can't blame Satan for everything. yeah yeah correct yeah i mean i think in the christian circles we we end up uh, developing that kind of a thinking see for example uh, if i have to come for your class okay i know the exact time i i should leave if i leave later than that it's very crazy to to get here and start the class on time now if i leave late okay and let's say there is a traffic signal traffic police i can't say you look satan satan is opposing me you know i'm trying to serve the lord see this traffic jam it's from the devil uh, you know or uh, something anything road block it's from the devil but what's the logical answer i should have left my house little early okay so there are some things which are absolutely logical and it depends on us and our decisions so we cannot blame the devil he'll be like look at that <laughs> i didn't do anything <laughs> and all these christians they are going on telling i did it i did it i didn't do anything <laughs> yeah correct yeah so
so yeah everything he is not doing sometimes it's our own issues yeah and they're doing themselves and getting into trouble that's true ma'am uh, hmm. we uh, we talk like how saturn can use put our like use our minds and hmm. put our thoughts to uh, you know manipulate us or deceive us can saturn also use our feelings yeah uh, okay can he use our feelings yeah. yeah like in the same way like even feelings were we think in our mind right Correct. so can uh, feeling can also be a tools for saturn so, or to work on us yeah correct so one thing i want to clarify he can just inject thoughts okay but he cannot make us think the thoughts you got it so the first thought we generally say first thought is it may or may not be ours so if it is from god it's god's thought if it is from satan it is satan's thought or it can be my own thought first thought uh if it is from god or satan i don't have control second thought i have control so point is satan cannot control my mind i still have will okay that is one thing second can he give us feelings so i would say uh, prince that he begins with thoughts only because you know what feelings are usually connected to thoughts like if if i'm scared of someone the moment i think about them i feel fear right so what satan can do is he'll put the thought of that person in my head then the feeling of fear will follow so i i think he gives thoughts but feelings will follow like that yeah so we can do that all right okay so let's close off then we'll have some continuation in the next class as i you know cover the rest of the subjects um let's pray could somebody pray anyone nina kiran anyone father god we thank you we thank you for this time lord lord whatever we we have learned today help us to uh, use it and be an overcomer overcomers lord uh, from the tactics of the devil in jesus name we pray amen thank you everyone god bless you all the best for your assignments uh, please start working on it right now don't uh, don't don't work on it two days before submission okay right all the best bye for now